and we're just going to get started. Okay, great. So, good evening, Black Blockchain Consultants. Super excited to have everyone here today. My name is Cherie Warwick. I am here with Alvin Marquez, who is part of NEM or NEM. And um, I checked today, I just checked, and they have a $1.6 billion market cap. And one of the interesting reasons why I wanted to have Alvin on, I heard him first of all at a government blockchain association meeting. And I wanted him to come to us because we often hear about people building on Ethereum or EOS, but people are also building on NIM. And there are specific reasons why certain developers are choosing their platform over all of the others. So as, as blockchain consultants, one of the things we may have to do is guide some of our non-tech clients in regards to the type of platform that they would want to put their project on. So I thought it'd be great to have Alvin here tonight to talk with us a little bit about that decision process, about NIM, why people use them, some of the use cases that they have um, for both government and uh, private sector side, uh, and just everything else that, that we can get from him. So he's going to speak for about 20 minutes. He has a presentation for us, and then we're going to open it up for Q&A. So I'm going to just uh, give you the mantle, Alvin, and say welcome, and you can start your presentation at any time. All right. Thank you, everybody, uh, for having me here. Uh, my name is Alvin Marquez. Just a small little introduction of who I am. I'm actually born and raised in um, Hawaii, and uh, I'm currently residing in Fairfax, Virginia. Uh, and as, as a profession, I'm a uh, senior systems engineer, and um, I'm an IT enthusiast, all kinds of um, things technology-related I, I like and want to um, get involved with. And blockchain is, is one of those new things that uh, interest me. So what I'm going to talk about today is about NEM, and let me go ahead and share my screen here. Um, let's see. All right. All right. Does it look good on your end? Yes, it looks All good. Right. Okay. So I'm going to do a brief overview of NEM, uh, of the NEM blockchain, and there's a lot of different details about it, but I'm going to do a high-level overview so you get just the basics of it. And um, we're going to talk about use cases and uh, its architecture as well. So with the NEM blockchain, it's based on a smart asset system. And uh, these are the, the thing, different things I'm going to talk about. Smart asset system, platform architecture, services, use cases, and more importantly also the, the community. Who's involved, uh, people who are talking, businesses, talking with um, users, and things like that. So NEM is based off of a smart asset system. And this is a... Uh, a, a brief look at what it um, contains, but it, it's made up of four parts. And the first part is the address or the container asset. Second is the mosaic or digital asset. Third is namespace or sub namespaces, kind of like uh, uh, fully qualified domain names uh, in the internet. And lastly, uh, transactions, putting all those things together and making it work for uh, a user, customer, or a business. So I want to talk about the first thing, which is the address or the container asset. Now, an ad address or container asset can be as simple as uh, an M account or your digital wallet that can contain uh, cryptocurrency or mosaics or digital assets. Uh, but it can also represent a package to be shipped, a deed to a house, or even a, uh, a document that is notarized on the blockchain. Um, but this asset can, be, can become real smart when you configure special rules on it, uh, rules to it. And one of those rules that I want to talk about or services on the NAND blockchain that is built in is called the multi-signature service. Um, the services on the NEM blockchain, we can, we can categorize that as smart contracts and they're all built in, right? So in this example, we have um, several address or containers, right? We have Hannah's wallet, John's wallet. So a address um, that represents, or an address or container that represents a user can have control over a address or container that represents an asset, which is in this case, a person's a shared wallet, right? So if Hannah wants to use funds in this shared wallet or multi-signature account, uh, she would need not only her approval, but also John's approval, right? So this is all built in. They sign it uh, once a transaction is made. John says, okay, I'll approve it. He signs it and then the transaction is, is made, whether it's sending cryptocurrency or making certain 
and changes to the actual um, NIM account, right? So this is one example of how an asset such as a address or container can become really smart in the blockchain when you combine it with uh, services or smart contracts that are already built into the NIM blockchain. So that's the first part, the uh, address or container. The second part is the mosaic. Mosaic is also known as your digital asset. So very, very simple, right? So it can be um, your cryptocurrency. On the NEM blockchain, we're we talking about ZEM, which is the, the very first and native uh, uh, coin on the NEM blockchain. But it can also represent stock, um, reward points, or even carrots in a, in a farm field, like every single carrot. But that can be a mosaic, right? So they're made up of different uh, attributes, such as uh, its name, uh, description of the mosaic, quantity, divisibility, transferability, whether it's mutable or not, right? Mutable means not necessarily editable, but updatable, right? Changing the quantity, um, something higher or lower. And uh, also another attribute, levy, which is tax. So when you're sending a mosaic to one user, um, a certain amount of it is taxable and sent to another NEM account, right? So that's what levy is. So this is what makes a uh, mosaic or your digital asset um, and these attributes are, 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 are created when you want to um, uh, create a digital asset on the NAND blockchain. So its most common use on the NAND blockchain is for cryptocurrency, but it can be used for, uh, again, many different things. So that's a mosaic. The third part is the namespace or sub namespace, right? So this is like your fully qualified domain name in, on the internet. Um, here are some examples. So uh, you got namespace dot sub namespace colon and then the mosaic, right? So when you create a mosaic, you have to have a namespace um, that represents either you, your business. Um, so it's a, a placeholder um, when you're sending mosaics or digital assets from one, per, one NIM account to another, right? So here are other examples. We have country and coin, right? Uh, I think one example that's already out is Venezuela with their petrol coin, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, other examples here at country.treasury, call in their currency. So we could talk the USA.treasury and then the USD like that um, but it can also be something as state dot county dot city dot street so if you see those different dots those are actual sub namespaces under sub namespaces and then it goes to um, its its mosaic which in this case it represents a home one or maybe the address of an actual person's home that can be transferable right so if we transfer someone's home that's mosaic I transfer from my name account which is I own to another person's name account so now they own the home so that's just one example of how it can be used in a, in a smart way um, for that type of use so that's the namespace or sub namespaces, right? So those are three, and then lastly are the transactions, right? How we make, how we work our um, assets on the blockchain. So this is whether you're sending a mosaic from one NEM account to another, you're configuring um, NEM accounts, uh, transferring, transferring them from one order to the, uh, from one order owner to another, or or even sending messages that are in plain text or encrypted. These are all part of the transaction part of this, the NEM smart asset system. So again, in, in summary, we talked about four things, right? We talked about, um, let me go back real quick, the address or container, that's one. Mosaic is the second. Third is namespace and sub namespaces and transactions. Mm -hmm. right. So you're probably asking already about the cryptocurrency part. In NEM, it's called ZEM. Right, so NEM is the name of the blockchain technology. ZEM is the name of its of its coin. Uh, total um, out there is uh, eight million nine eight billion nine hundred ninety nine million and so on. Right, and the value is based off of its market price, which Sherry kind of um, stated earlier. Um, and its mosaic is represented by one, its namespace, which is NEM, colon, and its mosaic, which is ZEM. Right. So this is the main uh, cryptocurrency that is used to pay for transaction fees. And it's also used as a way of transferring value, right? Uh, but there are other uh, cryptocurrencies created on the NEM, right? So there's different tokens, right, um, that are on there. And they're created the same way. So ZEM, even if we call it, it's, we call it as a native coin, every other coin or cryptocurrency created on the NEM blockchain, which is a mosaic, is native in a sense because it's, it's created the same way as ZEM was created. So there's no pre-mining, but in the blockchain, it's created, right? So from the very first block, there was this much, this much ZEM created, and then uh, it was transferred from one account to another and so forth, whatever whatever happened to it, and it's all 
um, uh, you can you can check it out on the NEM Explorer, which I can uh, share later. But uh, that's that's NEM cryptocurrency ZEM, along with other uh, tokens that can also be created, um, and they're created in the same way. Did you say there's no mining? There's no, there's no, um, there, there is mining, but Zam in itself, right? It wasn't, it wasn't necessarily needed to be mined like uh, Bitcoin is or, or, or other coins before you get to the actual total value, right? It, the total value came from Block One, right? So uh, we'll, we'll talk about mining in a sense um, and how blocks, new blocks are created um, on the block blockchain. I think that might be my next slide, but we'll, we'll get into that. Okay. Um, but um, what I want to talk about is the platform architecture, right? How it's how it's how it is, right? So just like any other blockchain, we have different nodes all over the world, and um, in the very bottom right, we have the blockchain node network. All these different little um, blocks here; those are that represents every single block all around the world. And there's all kinds of USA, Japan, China, all over the world, right? And in each node has an API gateway server. So how it works is your existing solution, whether at home or at a business, can interact with the net blockchain using RESTful JSON API calls, right? So in the same way, uh, for example, uh, many developers uh, create their website and you probably want to use uh, Google Maps, right? Uh, Google has a lot of API um, libraries that uh, you can interact with that service, Google Maps, and put it on your, your web interface, right? So it's, just, it's the same way. There's uh, API libraries um, so that you don't necessarily need to know another uh, programming language like uh, Ethereum, you have to learn Solidity. Um, with the NAND blockchain, you don't need to do that. And there are um, developers already creating um, software development kits that can that are um, specific for uh, Node.js, uh, PHP, or even TypeScript. So it's, it's a lot more easier so that uh, whatever programming language you use for your already, uh, existing solution, you can use a software development kit and then you can interact right away with the NEM blockchain, whether it be querying um, uh, information from NEM accounts and so forth, or even writing to the blockchain, right? Which will, anytime you write to the blockchain, uh, it requires ZEM, right, to uh, pay for that transaction fee. So with the platform architecture, there's different types of um, uh, models, right? We have the mobile app direct access, where you program it all on your app and it interacts right away to the API gateway server. And it, again, it can interact with any NEM node out there, right? Of course, the, the closest one to you would probably be the, the, the more, uh, the simplest way and the more fastest and easiest way to interact, but it can literally interact with any node out there. Um, you also have the client server model, right? In the middle, and of course your legacy system, right? You have the existing server, and if you have to create another server so that it can interact with the API, the API gateway server, um, you can create that in between. So there's, there really isn't much change you need to do with your existing environment, especially if you're already uh, creating a business and all of a sudden you now want to integrate into the net blockchain uh, or any, any type of blockchain, right? You can do it straight away with, um, uh, with the API gateway server, right? So, Are there any um, APIs that allow a person who doesn't know how to code to create a blockchain application? Or does somebody still need to know how to code, at least in Java or C++ or something, in order to use this? Um, I'm not a developer myself, but what I've been told by developers out there, right, uh, if, you're, if you're already used to um, uh, coding with uh, uh, API libraries, which, which NEM has um, already um, listed, right, there's a website for just all the NEM API libraries. Um, but there's others that have created software development kits that to make it a lot more simpler so that you can still code in TypeScript if that's what you're doing. Um, so that you don't need to necessarily use the uh, API calls, just do it with the software development kit. Um, so yes, you do need to know some, some sort of programming language um, to, to code in that way. However, um, what I like about NEM is that even through its NEM wallet, there are ways that even a regular user as I can still interact with the blockchain, use its services without even knowing any code at all. And I think that's part of my next slide here. Oh, well, I'm, I'll talk about it later. Um, but um, there's, there's other ways that you can interact with the blockchain without actually knowing how to use APIs or the codes, and that's through the NEM wallet. Um, and I'll go through that on, as a next slide. But part of the architecture portion that I want to talk about is uh, the consensus, right? Uh, we know about uh, proof of work, something that Bitcoin kind of uses. 
uh, uh, that does use, right, uh, using uh, uh, resources such as GPU, CPU to um, calculate the next block, right? So it's, it's very um, resource intensive. Then there's proof of stake, which um, the higher uh, your account balance, the, the, the more chance you have of uh, creating the new block and therefore getting the rewards of that new block creation. But with the NEM consensus, it uses a proof of importance. Now there's a whole math to this, right? And we can, you can look at the NEM uh, white paper for all that, um, that technical stuff. But in a, in a general sense, this is what um, allows your importance score to be calculated. One, you have to have at least 10,000 plus ZEM vested. Now, vested means not only holding ZEM, but how long you held ZEM, right? So you can have, I could buy 10,000 ZEM right now, but they're not necessarily vested. They're actually unvested. Uh, but a certain amount of your uh, ZEM balance uh, becomes vested. And, 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 and I think if you have about 10,000 ZEM, it takes just roughly about seven to 10 days before they're um, actually all vested. And therefore, um, as soon as your 10,000 ZEMs are vested, um, you now start to um, achieve an important score, right? And, and once you obtain that important score, you can um, improve your important score by uh, who you transact with, right? All the different people you transacted, transact with. And not only that, the number and size of transactions you post in the past 30 days, right? And so the whole, the whole um, NEM blockchain consensus uh, rewards people who are actually active on the NEM blockchain, actually using its services. Um, those, if, you, if you have an important score and you, and you transact with other people with important scores, you help you helped val or, or validate other important people or important NEM accounts out there, therefore um, helping to validate the network health and um, also um, using, uh, you know, doing all those transaction fees, uh, rewarding those who uh, created nodes out there and have linked their NEM account with that. So as you become active in the, uh, the NEM blockchain, your importance score raises and there you have, and then you have a bigger chance of, of your account being used to create the, no, the next block and therefore gaining the ZEM or transaction fees um, that were made in that new block. Right, so that's that's how the consensus works. This is how each block is created, and um, only one M account is used to create a block. Right, so it's it's created roughly every one minute. Right, a new block, and that's um, every one minute a new person or a new M account is rewarded them uh, based on their important score. Right, so that's the M consensus. Um, well, right now I I saw your. Uh, Zim is uh, 17 cents. So if people decide they want to get on it today to be vested in the next 10 days, then, you know. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Exactly. So it, it'll be a good, a good time to get uh, that amount, uh, get, get an important score, and therefore um, uh, raise your important score as you become more active in um, sending Zim or, or doing other type of transactions. Now, uh, I do recommend staying above the 10,000, right? Because as soon as you... Uh, go below the 10,000, um, your important score is no longer there, right? So it needs to be above the 10,000 vested ZEM amount. Right. Uh, but more information can be shared um, later as we read through the technical documentation um, and, 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 and Google and research more of that later. Um, but um, some links, some resources available for NEM developers or, or people who want to develop on a NEM. Uh, we do have a GitHub um, website uh, NEM.io, which is the main website uh, for uh, all everything NEM and the NEM Foundation. And there's a developers page. There's also uh, NEM SDK for the Node.js, uh, NEM library um, for the API documentation. Not only that, we have 24-7 support. Now, not only people who are, I guess, in a sense, hired by the NEM Foundation to, um, to manage or admin these Telegram groups, but everybody out there in the NEM community, they're so helpful. Uh, in providing their, uh, their, their feedback, their lessons learned, and you can find them at uh, NEM Project or NEM Help Desk uh, channel on the Telegram group, right? So they're 24 seven available and uh, those who are admins and those who are non-admins, just regular people out there that are developing on NEM, uh, they can uh, help you in uh, figuring out how you use the API libraries or uh, software development system, depending on what programming language you are uh, 
uh, using, right? Okay. So those are the resources available. Now, here we have the, the NEM Nano Wallet. Now, for those who are not developers per se, but still want to use it in services, this is, what, this is your go-to place. So at nem.io slash downloads, the latest version for the NEM Nano Wallet is version 2.3.0. These are desktop clients. There's also mobile versions on the same uh, website for iOS and Android. Um, but just downloading it and um, unzipping its file and, and running the executable, you'll be able to create a, a wallet and get right into the, to the NEM blockchain. Uh, there's no syncing involved, right? It just connects to the nearest node um, and you'll be able to use it, right? Whether it's get Zam into your NEM wallet or use its different services, which I will go over next. And these are the different services available on the NEM blockchain. And I like to call them smart contracts in a sense because they're, they're built in, right? And one that we already talked about is the multi-signature or multi-user accounts where you can create or convert a NEM account into a multi-signature account so that you can add uh, users or other NEM accounts to manage or control that multi-sig or shared account, right? Uh, here you can create your namespaces and subdomains, right? And there is a... Um, a yearly fee for every um, namespace you create. I think it's about 100 Zem per year um, and it's renewable. Um, and so uh, you can do that all within um, the NEM wallet. Uh, another service here called Delegated Harvesting, which is uh, not, which is something different, right? So when you um, mine or create new blocks on the NEM blockchain, the term that's used on the NEM blockchain is harvest, right? So when you harvest um, uh, or create a new block, you can actually delegate your NEM account importance score to a um, active node out there, which is on 24 seven. And as you delegate your account or your importance score to that node, you don't, you don't have to have your NEM account on 24 seven in order to get um, rewarded Zem for the new block that's created if, if it's created with your NEM account or your importance score, right? So you can delegate to that uh, importance score um, to a node that can work on your behalf as soon as your, um, your chance of harvesting or creating a new block comes up and you gain the rewards of Zem from the transaction fees that are within that block. So that's a feature here that needs to be turned on uh, to delegate harvesting to another NEM node out there. Another service is Apostle, right? Which is a notarization uh, service where you can notarize docs, uh, all types of files, and it basically creates a hash and uh, puts that hash onto the blockchain and it's audible. Right, and you can have uh, you can um, update it as well in case you, you notarize one document, you made some changes, put a picture in it, whatever. Uh, you can update that, and then it's updated on the blockchain, and people can audit that in order to verify a document. If I sent a document um, to um, to another person in another country, they can be rest assured that when they audit the document in the NEM blockchain and it's successful, that they actually did receive a good working uh, copy or, or official document from me um, that is uh, um, uh, made made available through the blockchain. And that's all built in. So that's the Apostle service. Um, mosaics, right? As soon as you create your NEM space or subdomains, you can then create mosaics or edit it or edit it, um, update its um, description or uh, quantity and things like that um, if it's mutable. Uh, but if you do create a mosaic that it's immutable, meaning it cannot be changed, then you cannot really make eight edits to it, right? Um, so that's that's a that's a, a service available right within the the wallet. That again, this is all click and 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 send type of transactions where you don't need any developing or programming language experience. You just read in the instructions um, and click the right button, and then now you've created something. Um, we also have uh, instant exchanges here that can send you to Changely or Shapeshift, where you where you use a credit card or debit card, um, buy a Zam, and it is transferred to your NEM account. Uh, we also have uh, the address book here, uh, where you can, uh, when you're sending transactions or receiving transactions from all kinds of people, they're all in the NEM account um, address, right, which is made up of uh, uh, character uh, letters and numbers, right. But if you um, put their name next to um, uh, a NEM account, uh, it'll show up as their name within the transaction within your wallet. So you know exactly who it came from rather than keep guessing uh, who, who's, who sent it to you or who you sent it to. Um, there's also built-in voting, 
where you can create a poll, where it can be a simple yes or no, or you can create options where you ask the questions and you provide different um, options um, to vote for. Um, you can see the polls as well. And this is a very useful tool for um, currently where NEM is running a NEM community fund um, where businesses propose um, their, their use case and, and ask the community to vote for them um, and they provide you know, uh, a, a funding amount that they would need, whether it be 500,000 for developing their, their use case. And um, a poll is created within this same voting uh, service for that NEM community fund so that people out there with a NEM um, account can then vote uh, whether yes or no for that, that uh, use case or that business. And if there's enough yeses and um, um, it, it meets the criteria, then the NEM community fund with whatever amount they have can then provide funding um, to, for that company or that business to um, develop and, and therefore provide a service that's that's using the NEM blockchain for everybody else to, to take advantage of. Um, there's also another service for invoice. And these services are, are, are being updated or uh, being added upon um, as as the NEM wallet becomes more developed, uh, more features are put in. And especially with, um, I'll talk about it later, with a NEM um, going to NEM version 2, which is um, dubbed Catapult, if you ever heard of it, um, there'll be different plugins, right? So there'll, there'll be different services or or, or um, features available within the wallet that will be added upon um, and they will be available right within the wallet, which such as uh, this interface that I'm showing you. So these are all the basic services or our smart contracts available that are already built in. And you're probably already running, uh, wondering, uh, this is the question I get a lot, is can you build uh, your own smart contract and put it on the NEM blockchain? Um, that is not possible, right? Everything that's uh, NEM is built from scratch. And uh, anytime there's a new feature or a new smart contract that needs to be put in, there is a process involved where the developers are uh, or, or, or ideas are sent to the developers and the NEM Foundation, they talk about it, they, 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 they test it and things like that. And if it makes sense and it's uh, doable and it's uh, secure enough, um, it will be added to um, the NEM blockchain um, services that are already built in. So um, if you are planning on using smart contracts, you can create that um, off the chain within your own internal system. Um, and then use business logic and um, integrate that with whatever services that are already built into NEM such as listed here um, to, to integrate the blockchain into your, your overall platform or your, or your, or your overall uh, business service or, um, or product, okay? Um, so that's, that's the services. Um, so Catapult, NEM version two. Right? So the, the main feature additions would be what's called aggregated transactions or multi-level uh, multi-signature accounts. Now, let me go to, I think I can, I can, get out of here and I think I can share am I able to share uh, okay um, Sherry do you see my um, my Chrome Chrome page yeah I see it all right so this is um, nem.io slash catapult and the next version of nem nem version 2 will um, add upon uh, different plugins, right? And one of them are, are aggregated transactions and they feature things such as decentralized swaps, right? Uh, between exchange services or um, from uh, public to private um, private versions of the NEM blockchain, um, automate, automatic transaction fee payments, which, uh, which is a very a useful tool, especially those who um, are coming into services that are using them blockchain, such as uh, one, one example, LoyalCoin, which is a use case that I'll talk about later. Um, LoyalCoin has a wallet and they have their own cryptocurrency called Loyal, right? Um, but anytime you make a transaction with the LoyalCoin, it does require a Zem transaction fee, right? But what happens if a user doesn't have Zem, but they do have a lot of Loyal Coins from using um, the, the LoyalCoin service? Well, within the payment app, uh, you know, money can be transferred or, or, or sent where um, the payment app actually gives you the Zen amount to pay for the transaction fee, while the, and even though the user doesn't have Zen, so that the user can still make transactions with um, the example I'm talking about, LoyalCoin, 
right? And so with Ethereum, you know, you need uh, gas to to make transactions. Or what if you uh, or or other or other coins, right? Or other blockchains that uh, need to make transactions with their coins, you know, and that there's other coins made on on, the, uh, on those um, or other tokens created on those black block uh, on that blockchain technology, you know, what if you don't have that? Um, that gas or that other uh, native coin to pay for that transaction fee, and this is this will this will help with that, right? So users who don't necessarily have Zem but have other tokens from other services that are built on the blockchain can still use just that service, not necessarily have Zem to pay for the transaction fees. Um, uh, with aggregated transactions, there's also multi-asset escrow transaction example where a person pays 100 Zem and they get concert tickets and vouchers or things like that, right? So that's, that's an example of aggregated transactions. Um, another feature is multi-level, multi-signature accounts uh, to help with fraud detection, account recovery, right? Um, this is a good one, manufacturing and supply chains, right? Where a, a, the final product at the very top where it says 303, um, verifying that what you got is a quality pr a product, there's multiple things involved, right? Uh, factory conference production date, uh, digital inspection. There's a human factor involved. Um, shipment and temperature. Um, where the how the, how the shipment uh, went through. Um, all these things can be put onto uh, this aggregated transaction, so that when you get the final product, all these things are are in there to verify that yeah, I have um, have uh, something that is uh, uh, that is that, that is of high quality based on all the other things. So it's not just a company saying this is what we do, right? It's all um, part of the blockchain chain in terms of you know a person inspecting it or coming from the factory um, at a certain date or, or or how it shipped right so in this and example when should man, this be up say that again sorry when should catapult be up and running catapult that is still an uncertain date i know this is one of the things that uh, people some most some people don't uh, don't like where there's no necessarily a true timeline right and uh, there's there's some good and bad to that. W one thing I like about it, where is that we don't we're not giving the developers a hard set date. Um, you know, with Nem being so secure right now, and it hasn't it hasn't been hacked yet, or or or, or in in that sense uh, in that sense is because the developers take real good time in making sure that whatever features that are they're putting into the blockchain are secure, are stable, and uh, will will be of, of of good use, right? So there's no there's no hard set date. There were dates set for the catapult even from uh, last year, uh, mid this year, um, but there really is no set date. Um, but it is coming. Um, there's already documentation being made, examples being posted up, such as this one. Um, so when could it be out? I'm not too sure. I'm hoping sometime at the end of this year. Um, but it's already available for use, a uh, beta use, by regular users or businesses. So. People can get on it uh, to try its services and see how they can uh, fit it into their business logic and uh, or, or platform or business product and services. So that's that. Um, so that's Catapult. And let me go back and share PowerPoint. All right, so I'm back to my PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. um, so that's Catapult. Um, use cases I want to talk about. So I already talked about uh, Loyal Coin, right? So here in LoyalCoin, the services that the LoyalCoin is all based off of a reward system, right? Uh, you you go to a shop, you buy something, and to reward you for your loyalty, you get a loyal coin, whatever that amount is. So that's the whole basis of their uh, company. Um, so the solution that they have is of course LoyalCoin, which uses the Mosaic service um, and and namespace and sub namespaces. Uh, they also have now uh, up and running a loyal wallet where through the mobile app you can spend, receive, and even exchange loyal coin uh, for fiat currency, even to Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin. Uh, and loyal coin is based off in Philippines, right? So they're, the other part of their business is building a loyal coalition where they go out to businesses and see who else wants to adopt this. So Starbucks in the Philippines, if they adopt it, or another um, shoe store or clothing store that adopts this, right? If they all adopt loyal coin, if I receive loyal coin from Starbucks, I can then use that loyal coin to buy something at a clothing store or another store that um, that has that is adopting loyal coin as a service. So it's it's really cool that you know we have many different businesses that have their own loyalty reward system, right? But you can only use it at that store. 
or with loyal coin, they're making it possible so that um, you can go to different stores that uh, that adopt the loyal coin, and um, and it uses the same features and and, and has the same benefits uh, for everything else in the NEM blockchain, where I can actually, if I have loyal coin. Um, I can send that to a, a, a relative of mine that has a loyal coin um, wallet, the loyal wallet, and they can then use that loyal coin for uh, a loyal a loyal points for to buy things that they want wherever they are, whether it be in Philippines or anywhere else that um, is using loyal coin service. Right. So that's this is one use case for um, for NEM that is up and running, and they're they're already um, being used at businesses uh, right now. Um, the next use case I wanted to go over is my Coinbase. Now, this this company is based off of Anaheim, of Georgia, and I am a NEM advisor too. And their their basic or main focus uh, or main service is a smart savings wallet, where you um, link a debit card or even credit card, and every purchase you make throughout the day, um, that amount is um, is um, rounded up to the nearest dollar. And that change is then deposited into a savings account with the MyCoinDesk platform. And so when it's deposited there, it still stays as fiat currency. But once you use uh, other services within the platform, such as the VezCloud network or VezCloud marketplace, where this marketplace is not only available for you to buy things from like Amazon or, or eBay or even Walmart, it also serve as a cryptocurrency exchange, very similar to Coinbase, right? So um, that's it's it's the exchange is almost up and running. The marketplace is, is soon to be available. Um, but unlike uh, other than Coinbase, which has Ethereum, Litecoin, Bitcoin as a cryptocurrency exchange uh, type of platform, my Coinvest will not only have those services but also be able to support Zem and other NEM tokens on the NEM blockchain. Right. So this would be uh, a huge thing where if a USA starts. Um, um, using NEM blockchain more and more companies start creating NEM tokens with their own cryptocurrency, they can go through a service such as my Coinvest within their Vez Club exchange to, to change things from either um, a, a, a business's cryptocurrency to Zem to fiat currency to another Bitcoin or, or Litecoin or things like that. Um, so th those, there's options other than Coinbase available. And so the mosaics used here is uh, CBZ, which is their Vez coin, which is their way of transferring value but they also have CVZT, which is a VezCoin token, and that will serve as type of a security token where you can actually have um, some part of the business in a sense. Um, but that part is still being worked on and developed. Um, but that, this is my coin, my Coinvest, a uh, use case already being developed and soon to be up and running completely, uh, either by the end of this year or early next year, and it's gonna uh, uh, be a, a benefit to the NEM community. Or, or the NEM blockchain, especially in the USA. Um, so that's my coin uh, Another use case, uh, CERN is based in India. Um, they're basically a student finance and lending platform, but it's not just that. So it's, it's what they're trying to do is be able to lend money to students from lenders in a peer to peer fashion, right? Try to make it faster for uh, lenders to, to lend money to students. Uh, it's also trying to bridge the gap between um, universities and students as well as employers with students. Um, and um, the services that they use is the Mosaic. They have their own uh, CERNIS uh, token. They also use the Apostle service. So we talked about the Apostle or the notarization service being used in the NEM wallet, right? So I need to open up my desktop client um, I have them and I can use uh, the positive service where I, want, where I want to notarize the document that I have, right? But what CERN is, is doing, it's using the positive service but making it web-based so that anybody can actually use it. Uh, they just have to log in, whether with their Google account or create their own account. They can use the service right then and there. And it's already in beta form, but I don't need to open up my desktop wallet, which is sometimes uh, a lot harder than just putting in a website page name logging in and then I can already use it. And what the Apostle service does, it allows uh, lenders, universities, and even students um, provide that proof of authentic authenticity for uh, you know, like a student's ID, all their documents needed, or you know, even universities when they give a, um, your, your report card or um, you know, confirming that you actually did um, 
you take courses at a university, right? All that stuff is uh, notarized through an apostle service, and CERN is, is using their their um, service called Lamina to make that all possible, so that as a student um, provides a, a authentic documentation and it's already notarized by the blockchain, universities who uh, adopt CERN is can trust it. Lenders who um, who uh, adopt CERN is also can trust that. And uh, CERN is also trying to involve governments. So the government of India um, being able to notarize documents like that, such as a person's ID or driver's license or things like that. So as they're fully integrated, you know, a person from a student from India who wants to come to like uh, USA to, um, to for school, uh, they can get the, the, the money that they need. They can get uh, the support they need also from employers all within the platform in a, in a very quick way um, so that it's easy for the student to actually just focus on, you know, going to school, getting the education rather than worrying too much about, um, you know, their, their loans and things like that. Um, so this is a, a full platform that's also going to provide um, uh, freelance job opportunities so that employers, as they get to know students that are going to universities and they know what courses they're taking and skills they're, they're achieving, they can then bring them on, whether it be through internships or freelance jobs, and that'll provide um, experience for the students so that as they go throughout their school, they get experience, and then when they graduate, um, they, they have that experience all notarized uh, or, or put on the blockchain. The employers can hire them afterwards, or um, other employers who are also on the platform can look at the other students' skills and then maybe um, go after them in terms of uh, getting them, uh, you know, having them work for them for different jobs or services. Um, so that's the CERNAS platform based in India, um, you know, providing a, a full a full round of services for students, not only for finance lending, but also um, being able to provide them with uh, job opportunities and experiences. Uh, there's also going to be a um, scholarship fund where community can, communities can get involved in uh, um, providing scholarships for students and um, getting their participation as well. So that's CERN is not I, uh, the CERN is a company. Um, next is MuleChain, um, another company based in California. And so think um, Airbnb for real estate or Uber for cars. This is MuleChain for um, delivery and warehouse services, right? Logistics. So there's two main parts here, right? Mules and pack stations. So anybody can be a mule where they actually become the deliverer, right? Somebody requesting a package to be delivered, they get the hold of me, the mule, I get it, I send it uh, and deliver it. Um, pack stations, anyone's house uh, or, or, or location can be used as a place to store these packages so that these different mules can then pick them up from these pack stations and send it to their final destination. The features, the name features that they'll use is namespace and mosaic, which is their uh, cryptocurrency coin with MCX. Um, they'll be also using multi-sig accounts for escrow, right? So when we provide, when we want to, a service to be, um, when a requester requests for a mule to deliver a package, right? They send the, the cryptocurrency, it's held in escrow. Once the, the mule or the person who's delivering the package is confirmed that it's, uh, the package has reached its final destination, then the money is released and sent to the person who has delivered the package, which is the mule, right? Um, it also uses Apostle to notarize um, performances of these mules or these people who are, or these people who have pack stations um, and provide them uh, certificates and, you know, just rewarding them with, with good work. Um, even uh, if a person was to give a review of a person, um, every so often all that information is um, notarized on the blockchain so that it's authentic and it's, it's not, um, it's not editable, right? So it's not like I can go to a, a review website and change a review to good to bad or bad to good um, just by putting in some code. All of these things are notarized or confirmed on the blockchain. There's that proof of the authenticity of, uh, of a person's uh, performance or, or good works um, uh, on, on, on being the mule or the person who provides the pack station. Um, so these companies um, are different use cases that are available. Um, let me go back real quick. Uh, Loyal Coin in the Philippines, MyCoinVest in Atlanta, Georgia, Cernes in India, and MuleChain in California. Um, last but not least, the NEM community, which is 
um, I think is, is a lot, is, is good to get involved with and not just reading the, the, the white paper or, or just within the website and going to these different um, avenues, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter even, um, they provide the latest and greatest in news, what's going on, new use cases, new businesses, uh, fancy ideas that our people are using uh, or how, how they're using them blockchain. Uh, updates to catapult will come through this as well. Um, what I like most about is Telegram, right? We have people available 24-7. And, and the three that I want to talk about is Nimberia uh, or, or actually NEMRED, which is where uh, discussions of the NEM blockchain technology are discussed upon right and we also have NEM North America which is uh, increasing every day um, this is where I think uh, you'll get the most of in terms of use cases being developed on in uh, NEM North America then we also have Nimberia all off topics that type of stuff but if you're into trading and all that cryptocurrency stuff Nimberia is the place where they talk about prices going up and down and people going crazy left and right uh, whether they're losing money or gaining money that's Nimberia but there's also NEM channels for different uh, countries out there, whether it be Ukraine, Russia, Australia, New Zealand. There's a whole lot of different um, uh, channels out there, uh, all based in their, in their language, if, if that's the case, um, and not necessarily just in English. Um, and not only that, um, I'm pretty active out in the community, um, asking, you know, people usually private message me on Telegram. This, you can reach me through these type of avenues. I've also created some YouTube videos to help in creating your own wallet um, and using some of the features uh, within the wallet, which I will add upon later. Um, um, but lately I've been working with uh, different companies in trying to integrate them into their, their business. And I've been working with that a lot. But if there's any updates, this is how you can reach me. Um, so that's me, that's, the, that's uh, my username, YoMyCoin. Uh, my name is Albert Marquez, and this is a brief overview of the NEM uh, blockchain, what it is, uh, and, and what it is, and what it is being used for today uh, for business uh, for businesses and use cases out there. Um, other than that, um, I'm open for question and answers if anybody has uh, asked any right now. So. Well, they are coming in, so everybody, uh, if you will put your questions into the Q and A and not the chat. Uh, we can have some rapid fire with Alvin here, but I have a couple of questions to start with. So okay. the first is a very broad question. We are black blockchain consultants or just blockchain consultants in general. And many of us are asking, how can we as non coders break into the industry? So you uh, mentioned that you aren't a coder as well. So my first question to you is how'd you get the shop? <laughs> well, uh, I guess more detail. I, I do not necessarily, I don't work for the NEM, but there's a whole NEM foundation organization that their, their, whole, um, their whole existence is making sure that the blockchain technology exists, they're maintained, and, and, and it's marketed, right? So I don't, I don't work for the NEM foundation. However, I'm so active in the community that um, uh, I, I get involved in answering questions, helping people um, understand NEM, how they can use it, and... Um, so it's not necessarily a job, it's more so of a hobby in a sense. So I've been active in these telegrams, uh, businesses get a hold of me through um, email um, and just regular phone calls. And so through that, um, that's how I've been involved. So um, I don't know necessarily what my role is, but I, I like just being involved and in learning about where NAM is gonna go um, and seeing, that, seeing it integrate into the businesses uh, gives me great hope in terms of how we can uh, uh, reduce costs for businesses, uh, make uh, lives easier for users, um, and just making it uh, a better experience overall. Um, and I'm sure there's lots of uh, improvements we can do uh, in everyday lives and businesses and making things more efficient. And I think blockchain has that ability to do so. So that's why I've stayed with it. So I'm really not paid to do anything. Really? Ah, it's, it's well, I'm sure that you, I'm sure you're getting other opportunities because you are active and so active in the community. Correct. So, um, and why don't we stop, stop the screen share so everyone can see, um, <clears throat> see both of us uh, in big bubbles here. Oh, do I stop the share? Uh, I probably can do it. Let's see okay. here. Uh, oh, no. Why don't you do it? Uh, Screen share. You should see something. Okay. Yeah, there we go. 
All right, so that way we can, yeah, people can see us. Okay, so uh, the other question that I had for you is um, in regards to the question I asked you the first night we met, which is there are other um, options for people, whether it's Ethereum or EOS, why do people really choose NIM? And, you know, you guys are the silent, uh, the silent, we call it, uh, base out there. And your answer to me was very interesting. So I wanted you to, to share that in terms of the difference between, you know, the Ethereum and the EOS being the rock stars and NEM, which is really focused on the, um, the platform itself. Right. Uh, so there, there's several reasons. So um, CERN is, um, which is a use case I presented earlier about financial student loans, they actually started on Ethereum. Um, and they moved recently to the NEM blockchain uh, because they felt that it, uh, Ethereum was going to be too expensive for them um, and that the coding for them just, um, it, it was easier to code in the NEM blockchain because of the API libraries. And with the Ethereum, you have to learn Solidity, a different language. Um, uh, to make smart contracts and things like that. So it made a lot more sense for them, not only developer-wise, business-wise, um, to go to the NEM blockchain, not only for the development part portion of it, where they use the API libraries and software development kits, but also because of the community. Uh, they felt that uh, the NEM community was a lot more open and they're more focused on use case, which, which in my opinion, I think the NEM community uh, and the NEM foundation itself, they're more focused on use case, how the technology is used, not necessarily hyping about, oh, Zem is going to reach $2 or something, so you have to use it, right? Um, so that's another thing. And I think NEM has been uh, a lot silent more than Ethereum and EOS because NEM didn't market first before they, they developed. They developed first before they marketed. So they got everything um, set in stone, all the services, the blockchain was created, and then it was released, and then the marketing came after, right? So that's why, that's one reason why most people don't hear about it. So the NEM blockchain is built and ready to use right now. I think EOS still has some services still in the, in the pot, so they're not fully out there. Um, and Ethereum, there's, I mean, they're out there, but um, there's so many use cases out there uh, using it. But NEM is a, a is a, uh, um, it's, it's already packaged and ready for use right now. There is the NEM version 2.0, Catapult version coming up, but that, those are all addition plugins to uh, what's already existing. Uh, um, so it's ready for use. You really don't need, there's, there's no um, other things coming up, up, up with it unless, uh, other than the NEM version 2.0, but it's ready for use and you can use it right now. And with its uh, network, there's also a test network for it. So whatever's on the main net is on the test network. So developers or business can start using the test network, develop on it. If it, if it makes sense for them, they move it to the main net, right? Uh, so those are all readily available for everybody to use. Um, so yeah, that's my answer. Question. Yeah, so I thought that was very interesting because um, I obviously I'd seen NIM on Coin Market Cap, but I really didn't know what it was until your presentation. And um, <clears throat> I think it's very interesting what you're saying in regards to uh, the community that's been created and why uh, you've done it, you know, in the way that you have. So we have some questions here, so I'm just going to. Uh, let people know. First of all, there's a question about will there be a replay of this webinar? Yes, there will be a replay on our Facebook and our YouTube page. Um, Victor is asking, will you be sharing the slides? So is it possible for us to get the slides from you, Alvin? Uh, sure, yeah. Um, I can, I'll can. i probably send it as a Google Drive link share, and then you can share that link on your Facebook page or whatever the live video is going to be. But yeah, I'll, I'll make that available for sure. Correct. Great, great. Victor's also asking, does the NIM importance 10,000 coins requirement rise over a period of time? So will it always be 10,000 coins or, or um, as you get more and more popular uh, as a platform, will people have to? Yes. Um, the minimum, minimum amount to start an importance score is 10,000 ZEM vested. Um, in the white paper, there is a line in there that says this number can change to something smaller. If NEM or ZEM becomes more popular, for instance, where uh, if a ZEM, the price of ZEM becomes, you know, I don't know, $20, right? Um, so it, it is possible that it can get lower, but that in, in my 
in my opinion, that would require a fork, a soft fork of some sort and things like that. But no, uh, minimum is 10,000 investors to start an important score. Um, it would be wise to get more Zim so that you stay above that 10,000 because raising your important score requires you to be active on the NEM blockchain, making transactions, sending Zim, or using the services um, as shared in the NEM wallet. So you need more Zim to do that. Caress is asking, I noticed in your presentation that the NEM wallet is compatible with Trezor. Do you anticipate it will ever be compatible with, compatible with the Ledger Nano hardware wallet? Um, I know there was uh, talks about wanting that to be an option. Um, I haven't heard last since whether that's, that's uh, available yet, um, but I know a lot of people have been asking. So if the Ledger Nano folks um, uh, will make that possible, uh, it's on their timeline. Um, but I don't think uh, NEM Foundation or any of those developers have pushed for it. Um, again, that's just uh, my current uh, news. I haven't looked into it yet. But yeah, it's available for Treasure, uh, and to my knowledge, not yet on Ledger Nano. Okay. So Darius has a, a real serious technical question here. Uh, he's saying, I'm interested in the POI algorithm. I've read the white paper, but it's sort of vague. For example, why is 0 0.9 chosen as an exponential decay constant? Just curious, the outlink matrix has an IGK, IJK components to the matrix. I'm not sure what that was supposed to say. Uh, what exactly are those components? I know these are very in-depth questions, but could you point me to someone who can explain if possible? That is a very technical uh, question and I do not have the answer for it. However, uh, I did share a, a Telegram channel, um, NEM Help Desk. Um, I'm sure they could um, point you, either answer your question directly or point you to the right person that could uh, provide an, an answer for that. Um, so NEM helped us in Telegram. Uh, if you do have Telegram, go there. Um, other than that, on the NEM.io website, there is a support page where you can ask a question, right? So put your name, email, ask the question, and they'll be able to get back to you. Great. Prasti is asking, will NEM be scalable so that CryptoKitty kind of collectibles can be developed in the NEM platform? CryptoKitty. I am actually not too familiar with CryptoKitty. Do you know what that is, Sherry? Uh, just vaguely, it's like some phase, kind of like Pokemon or something like that, but it's some sort of collectibles that people are buying. Um, what do you call it? Uh, somebody in, the, in the, um, the chat can help me with this, but it's, it's all these unique caricatures. Um, Lisa's saying it's an ERC721 protocol. Oh, okay. um, but I, but I, I, yeah, so I know it was a big okay. craze. Yeah. Uh, oh, consider well, digital thing, pet right? rocks. Somebody said that. That's a good explanation. Digital right. pet rocks. It's, it's all digital, right? So yeah. uh, for CryptoKitty or any kind of digital collectible, that can be represented as a mosaic on the NEM blockchain. So if they're collectible, right, uh, I have a certain amount. Uh, if it's like Pokemon cards, right, we have Charizard. Uh, we have a certain type of Charizard card. Um, there's, there's only a hundred of them, right? I give a description, what it is, and I'll say it's immutable, meaning it cannot be changed. And so I can send that, that mosaic that represents that Charizard card to anybody, and then now they have that digital representation of, of, of Charizard, right? So that has to be linked to your application, of course, where it can then be linked to a uh, digital graphic of that specific Charizard card. Part, which is linked to that specific mosaic. Um, so, so there's all that business logic and process involved where there's the blockchain that represents the digital asset, but there's also that application that can bring up a graphic of uh, crypto credit or that Charizard card and then um, and, and showcase that you own it and then you can use it for whatever game or uh, trading platform you have it on. So CryptoKitty can be represented as a mosaic on the NEM blockchain. Right. And then you can trade it probably with the smart contract feature that, that yep. NEM has. So yeah, the yeah. transaction, I send my mosaic to that person. Now that person has the crypto kitty or that Charizard card and they own it. Right. Right. So, yes. Right. Darius is asking, also, is it possible to revert a multi-sig account into a private key account? Yes, it is possible. When you configure a multi-sig, you need to add um, 
NEM accounts to it that is going to uh, maintain it, right? And to revert it back, you just remove all the other uh, the other accounts that are linked to it, and it becomes just a regular account. Um, but be cautious of that because um, one benefit of a NEMA, a multi-sig account is that you can transfer ownership of that multi-sig account to other NEM accounts, right? So uh, I don't know if my grandparents had a multi-sig account, but uh, they, they feel like they're going to, um, you know, not be around so often. They can then transfer that multi-sig account, that shared account to their, their, uh, their son and daughter-in-law, right? And so forth down the line. Um, so it's, it's transferable and it's configurable to, um, to be, you know, given to other people to manage and take care of. Uh, but yes, it can be converted back to a regular NEM account. Correct. Perfect. Final question um, from Dr. Keisha. Have you encountered any business problems for which blockchain was not a fit, NEM or otherwise? Um, I, I, I haven't confirmed this, but there was a use case that was going to be built on NEM, and they went through this whole NEM community for the proposal. Um, and asked the community for funding, um, but they re then they were built on Ethereum, went to NEM, and they went back to Ethereum. And uh, I think their reason was at the time the the NEM community wasn't as involved with what they're trying to do, so they went back to the Ethereum. Um, that that was again, it's a vague uh, understanding on my end, but uh, that's that's the only reverting back of. Uh, for a company that said they will, don't want to use them anymore, they want to go back to Ethereum. Um, but yeah, other than that, because um, that that reason wasn't necessarily we couldn't code on them or we couldn't interact with the blockchain. It was more so community wasn't involved, so we don't want to do it anymore. Um, but that was just uh, one example that I uh, briefly remember. Um, other than that, those who have started using the NEM blockchain and developing on it. I've only heard good things about it, right? It's easier to do, it's faster, it's, it saves time, uh, it's cheaper because right now Zen being at its low price, the transaction fees are very low, right? For using the public chain. Um, but yeah. Yeah, but one uh, of the things I think Dr. Keisha was asking, we, we constantly hear not everything is built for the blockchain or not every oh, yeah. use case. So I think her question was more so, was there something that came out uh, or that, you know, somebody, thought they wanted to build not only on NIM, on any platform, and all of a sudden we're like, but that doesn't, the blockchain doesn't solve that problem. Right. Um, now, keep in mind that we do have the, the public chain and the private chain, right? So I think a lot of cases, um, uh, having a public chain integration may not work for a company, but they might be interested in a private chain so that they, they themselves internally uh, make sure that they have uh, no notarization for their documents or their files, right? So that they keep in track of, of what's going on logistically and things like that. So they could use that as a, as a way for um, yearly audits and stuff like that, something that's uh, quicker or more trustworthy, right? right? So um, they, you, don't, you have the public chain option, uh, but also the private chain if you're interested. So um, just, just as an overview, NEM, um, as the name is stated, is the public chain. The private chain is called Mijin, M-I-J-I-N. Um, so that's the difference. If you hear NEM or Mijin, NEM is public, Mijin is private, but okay. it has the same exact features. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Anonymous is asking, what is Catapult? I'm going to ask you to revert back to, uh, we're going to put this up and we'll email uh, everybody this link so you can go back and see the full explanation of what catapult is we just uh, are you know really out of time and then Prassi is asking do you have any use cases where it's being considered in government projects in the united states um currently uh for me i do not know of any i know with the government blockchain association there may have been uh, talks about it being used for keeping track of, of software um, assets um, but that's one thing I've heard of. But one thing that I hope the U.S. government uh, could use the NEM blockchain for is the voting process, right? There, there has to be some, some discussion of how that process is going to roll out. But with the voting polls and making that as an option for, you know, um, putting people into office, we have a blockchain that's ready for use. 
if uh, any state or federal government is willing to use it. And that's what um, I'm hoping could be a, a possibility in the near future. Um, and here being in DC, who knows, uh, maybe I could talk to somebody and maybe get that rolling. Um, but that would be a nice thing to see because there has been other countries, I forget which one, that has used blockchain for voting. Kenya. Um, I would like to see them as a, as a feature for that, uh, as yeah. a possibility for that. So um, that's, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I think it was Kenya that actually did it as a country. So, and I think Switzerland is also looking at it as well. So with that, um, I know we have other questions in here, but we really are out of time now. So uh, Alvin has been kind enough to give us his, his contact information. So you can contact him directly by uh, Twitter or Telegram. Um, I will say, please don't forget November 3rd, in Baltimore is our conference. We're really super excited about it. It is all about black wealth, blockchain, and crypto. We're going to go, uh, Dr. Keisha and I were talking about some blockchain games that we're going to create in order to teach blockchain to people who don't know about it, all the way to how to invest in projects, whether it's your time or your money, uh, how to find great team members, and how to build $100 million uh, blockchain enterprises. So. That's on November 3rd with a bonus day on November 2nd. You can go to blackwealthandblockchain.com in order to get more details about that, but it's gonna be a really, really good time. And um, if uh, you are part of BBC, Raymond had put up uh, some requests in terms of some people that he's trying to get a warm introduction to. If you're part of sorority, fraternity, anything, uh, other civic organization, especially in the Mid-Atlantic, we are trying to get warm introductions in order to invite people to our conference. So please reach out to Raymond Shorter for that information. So Alvin, I'll give you final words and then we are going to sign off. All right. Thank you very much for having me. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for having me. All right, then. And let's stay in touch as well, uh, your community, our community, so that we can uh, do some good things together. So um, with that, good night, everybody. Have a good evening. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.